I think we should have a hive mind, but that mind is being joined as the mind of Christ. And therefore that mind would be a very positive way of all relating to God and each other and creation in a way which is very collaborative and very much in oneness of heart and mind and purpose. I think that's the goal. Obviously there's counterfeits. So the counterfeit will deceive people into various confirmations. Yeah, you know, when Paul said, do not be conformed to this world, he, he was really meaning the religious and political world. So do not be conformed to Judaism. Do not be conformed to Romanism. That's really what he was trying to say in context, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So don't be pressed into any shape that someone else is trying to press you into. And I totally agree that culture and societal norms depending on where you live and what the culture is you have been brought up in, will try and conform you to those norms. Whether And some of those norms are not bad necessarily, no, no pun intended, norm. Um, but you know what I mean? Some of those things aren't actually bad, but they're still confirmation to a behavioral system that a society has adopted. And in the West, we would say our society, our our law if you like is based on the judeo-christian tradition whatever that is you know and that i don't believe that exists in reality i think that's a a handy tag to put on something to fit everyone into and keep everyone thinking that they're part of this because it comes back a long time and in reality none of that is actually true and what's behind all of those systems are really designed to conform us and make us, as you say, lemmings, or uh, just can be controlled by bigger forces that are seeking to outwork a, an agenda through the political, the societal, the cultural, the ideologies and the isms, and trying to control us and keep us from our identity and our full sonship, because then all of those things will get exposed and we wouldn't be fooled into those societal norms. You know, and ultimately we could we could actually base everything on the thing that Jesus said, which was love. Love one another as I've loved you. And if everyone was actually doing that, then the world would be totally transformed. But we're not doing that. We're trying to fit into various ideas of what it is. And if you were brought up in Russia, you would have a very different life from being brought up in Canada. If you're brought up in China, you'd have a very different life than being brought up in Canada. So you have, depending on where you were born, if you were born in Iraq or whatever, Syria, I mean, you know, it's, it's quite, it's a bit like a postcode lottery in one sense, you could say, you know, if you're born in one country, you're going to have a much better way of life than you're brought up in other countries, you know, um, and I think that's just part of a big overall system, which is a control system to keep us following the pathway of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and of, away from the tree of life, because that keeps us deceived into works based humanism. And that humanism can be outworked through religion. It could be outworked through politics, it can be outworked through anything. But essentially, it's what we can do in our own strength, you know, um, even if that's performing to please God. Is still done in our own strength and it's done through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and that agenda is all about keeping us um, deceived into following an agenda that we think is our own when actually it's someone else's and that's what most people live in all the time and not aware of it and i think it's great to be aware that we are being pressured but not just from the things that are obvious but mostly from the things that aren't and the things we just accept as totally normal. And actually they're not normal from God's perspective. So if you're not going to be conformed to something in a negative, then you need again to know who you are that frees you from that conformity. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom is about relationship with God and outworking God's heart together in, in that relationship. And that is not a thing that you have to do or else. 
it's something which is to benefit you god says seek first my king because because if you seek first my kingdom then see all this amazing stuff that i've got for you rather than trying to work this all out in your own strength doing this your own way which will get you weary burdened worn out burnt out and eventually dead you know uh, and that that's ultimately the goal the enemy wants to rob kill and destroy you know um so i would say we need to know god more intimately to know ourselves more intimately not to be subject to those deceptions because they are huge deceptions you know that most people live in all of the time without realizing that they've been deceived you know so we've got to expose those deceptions by not coming into agreement with them and then hopefully being a light that other people could see what it's like to live in freedom and not be subject to those same deceptions but it is a system which is you know infiltrated the whole you know jesus warned against the infiltration of the political and spirit religious spirit and all of the tree of the knowledge and good and evil system is completely based on a religious and political spirit you know that that's how it functions and most people are totally unaware of it and just live life um, plugged into the matrix effectively of deception and when you get unplugged from the matrix of the deception it's like the whole is a whole different world um so we've got to be careful not to be conformed to any worldly agenda mold um whatever but it isn't just they want us to all think the same way it doesn't they don't care what we think so long as we don't think god's way the whole agenda behind it will mix all the ideologies all the religious things will be behind islam hinduism buddhism christianity and every other works-based religion it will be promoted by the same thing and it doesn't really matter to them what you believe so long as you don't know the truth so long as you're still in deception because then they're safe you know but once you know who you are they're not safe anymore you know so they don't any of that political the political spirit doesn't matter whether you're a capitalist a fascist a communist or any otherist doesn't matter they don't it doesn't matter whatsoever so long as you're trying to do it in a humanistic way what it doesn't want you is to be part of the kingdom of god um, doesn't matter whether you believe in any religion or none so long as you're not a true believer and follower of jesus and know your identity in him so we fight over the ideologies of which is best and none of them are best kingdom of god is best that's why we should seek it first you know now there are some you would say are from someone's perspective better than others you know but from others they would say the opposite you know so really we shouldn't really be looking at any of the different options that are out there on the menu of religious and political spirit stuff we should be seeking a different menu you know um otherwise we just go round and round in circles um on a different deception and a different deception and a different deception rather than realizing what the deception is all about and therefore being free from it uh, but it's done a very very good job in infiltrating the whole of the world's culture and societies and they're all functioning from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil all of them i'd like to introduce you to the engaging god program join us and hundreds of others around the world on this exciting adventure and i'll look forward to walking with you on this journey